Hello, welcome to Rick's Kits. Um, first of all, I want to uh, apologise for not bringing any content for the past year. Um, that is mainly down to uh, life getting a little bit in the way, unfortunately. Um, I had COVID and I've had a few anxiety issues along the way as well, so that's now all back under control. Um, I haven't not been modelling, as you could probably see from the camera shot. Um, I have done a few kits just to keep me sane, but I've sort of progressed away from what I was doing, which was military, and um, I'm starting to do uh, vehicles, uh, mostly American, trucks, and cars um, but I want to thank you all for staying subscribed I mean I could have lost all of you but you haven't you've you've stayed on board and I do appreciate that <coughs> excuse me um, so thank you for being there I want to try and give this another go uh, it's been a been quite a while um, And hopefully we'll have a lot of better content. When I say better content, more improved content than my previous videos. So I suppose I'll show you model by model of, of what I've actually done in the last year. So starting with the kit in front of me this is a 1964 Cadillac DeVille hardtop the kit manufacturer is Johan or Johan whichever way you want to pronounce it in English or American um, this kit was originally built by my father and it was in a brown colour what I must say is what I'm going to say actually first before I carry on um, my father used to build all American trucks and, and cars and vehicles like that back in the 80s um, he went blind in one eye with cancer and couldn't do basically lost so he lost his ability to do any modeling but his confidence went with modeling and he found that he didn't want to do it anymore so he had a hell of a bunch of kits up in his attic and he passed them over to me last year I liked what he had and I was quite happy to take those off his hands so there was a few rare kits in there some that show up on eBay for stupid prices um, but I'm going to build everything that he's got whether it's rare or not um, I, I don't care about the rarity value I just like what the kit is uh, so this was one of them anyway uh, yeah, so there was a 64 Cadillac Eldorado uh, convertible, which was totally in pieces. I will go and get that one. So there we have it, there's the uh, same 1964 Cadillac Eldorado de Ville in the convertible that's painted in titan gold um, bonnet comes off the original kit colour was red and I think the original kit colour on the red one was I'm not sure if I could see it, any of it but I think it was green but anyway these both of these vehicles were in pieces so to say 
this one not so much but this one was a was a right mess there was absolutely nothing in there so I had to totally rebuild it if I bring it up to the camera I don't know if we can see this or not um, just here is a break in the screen here is a break in the screen you're not picking that up on camera unfortunately and on this side here and here sorry that camera here sorry and that one there so the windshield was a complete mess as you can see we're still missing a part on this side which is hubcap um, yeah it was total mess all in the box complete complete and utter rebuild uh, this has got a battery this one hasn't got a battery and that's how things are missing off of them it's missing the aerial that comes with it um, but I'm happy the way they turned out this is a um, Italian red I believe this was which I painted it is it Italian red? yeah it's Italian red that's the LP the LP lacquer plates from Tamiya they go down really nice actually uh, they dry quite glossy and they're very quick drying as well the gold was the same lacquer paints uh, until I've been out of this for a while because I can't even get anything to focus there you go titanium gold LP62 <coughs> these aren't the only vehicles that I've made I have Get one back in there. Try not to destroy these. As he says, knocking the things off. I have another Cadillac. This one is a Hazagawa kit. Now, my belief on this one, this is done in pearl white. This is a what I think you call a curbside. got no engine uh, this is Hasgar kit it looks like a six, 1968 maybe I don't know I don't know what the year is I do like Cadillacs they look so nice uh, so it's a curbside kit it's 124th 125th scale is that the same scale as the the Opan yeah, a little bit smaller. There's a curbside kit. Very easy to put together. None of the wheels turn because they're solid against the side. Uh, they've got these plastic inserts. Uh, my belief on this kit, the way it looks, you see in here, it looks like it was maybe a mould from one of those um, when you go into a dealership a dealership kit you can buy a, a kit of or get a kit of the, of the vehicle that you're purchasing it looks like one of those a bit dusty in here so yeah that's that was the first half of last year those three I'm getting back into the picture excuse me three nice Cadillacs on oh, the the year of this 1964 that was the year I was born so it's nice to have something from the past so to speak okay so after the 
three Cadillacs that I built was this 1955 or 56 one sixteenth Chevy Bel Air hard top um, my f dad had this originally built in blue and white uh, but all these kits were sitting up in the attic so over the years all the gloss that he used had all gone yellow and horrible so um, basically I took this one apart stripped it all back down to the bare plastic and rebuilt it again so this is another rebuild uh, the chrome was a bit chrome stainless whatever was a bit knackered so I had to redo some of that <coughs> uh, I, I mean I don't mind he didn't mind me taking apart what he'd already built sort of make it my own if, if you know what I mean uh, I can't get that hood open but the engine is done as well oh there we go I did do the, the engine original um, red colour plastic doors open uh, shut very well unfortunately I've got a bit of um, a glue bomb issue here when my dad originally put it together but I'm not too particularly worried about that I quite like what's done in it there's if you can see anything there's the interior steering wheel sticks out quite well there we go I do like these old match I grew up with these matchbox kicks myself uh, I used to build I did build trucks back in the day when they first came out with the ma from the match matchbox range I uh, didn't have Kenworth Peterbilt 359 uh, Kenworth Alaskan Hauler I remember all those kits uh, especially the big uh, monogram is it monogram 1 16th scale let me put that one to one side because we have another another kit which had uh, was another total rebuild of my father's a lot of these are rebuilds none of them are started from scratch <coughs> so he had this 1950s monogram Ford is it 1950 no I think it's not it might be 1940s could be a 1940s Ford this was a monogram kit let me just double check Yeah, it's a monogram kit originally 1973. Now, this was in a bronze colour. All the doors were in pieces, the wheels were off, the bed was off, the cab and everything was off. And I thought that might look good if we put it back together and do it in this like grey white. It's not, it's not like a creamy white, it's, it is a greyish white. These stacks were actually a part of the kit. Um, I think that looks quite mean. Uh, I've given it a red and white interior. The doors don't open because the, all the hinges were broken. The only thing that didn't really fall apart was the chassis. Um, so he had it wired up with lead wire which is what they used back in the day for all their their wiring and stuff so i rewired it back up how he had it well how i think he had it and uh, that, was, that was the result these aren't the original headlamps he's put some round lamps on there uh, 
shorts top um, custom bumpers I the Ford logo on the back I put brown on the old deck because I think the wood I think the wood looks better than just a plain sheet still so that's that one that was a, re a rebuild I left all these mistakes on there yeah. that's where the hood doesn't fit properly down this side half the running board was missing on this side but yeah it went back together quite well I'm quite pleased with that one very pleased with that one I had to make new hinges unfortunately for most of it because like I said they were broken and they weren't really usable but you can see a bit of a glue bomb there I tell you what it didn't have it didn't have a real window here so I cut out a piece of plastic and put it in there so yeah that's those that was the second lot for the year so a 116 Chevrolet Bel Air and a 1940s monogram it's 124 no I don't know what the scales most of these scales are they're either 125th or 124th 1940s Ford time to show you the next lot of which I've been up to okay so next up not quite in the camera shot can we adjust the camera slightly maybe that's probably about as high as I can get it is this one twelfth scale Tamiya 934 Valent this has a lot of detail in it quite a long time putting this one together decals were a little bit of a nightmare in places but I got them all to go down uh, it's extremely detailed um, it's, oh, there's a lot of photo etch and stuff in here as well. Um, let's pick this up. I like the fact that, like, I think it's the fuel tank is moulded in this colour plastic. So you haven't got to try and find the paint for it. There's, hang on, let me see if I can find a pointer of any sort. So we've got rubber hoses, all, they are all made of rubber. Most of the, all the line work I think is all in here. They've got photo etch here and here, battery. Uh, the only thing they haven't got on there is the battery wires. Uh, this is a fuse box. The cover comes off of that. I'm not going to try and get it off because it's a nightmare to put it back in place. You've got the fire extinguisher and stuff in there. You've got just down in here. You might just be able to make it out. Steering linkage. Because the actual steering turns... It's not it's not a hundred percent so I haven't connected it up directly to the steering wheel because it does pop off. And then you've got photo etch oh. photo etch grills across the front. Um all the bumpers and everything, these are all this is all rubber or soft plastic. This is a very, very, very nice build. If you, ever, if you want to think about getting a, one of the big series Tamiya series cars like this there's a lot of detail in this it's a very nice build so your doors open seat belts it's 
zoom in there so that's photo etch and these are cloth cloth like seat belts uh, all the dash and everything's in there they're decals on the dash by the way um, you can see all the pedals they do actually move those pedals down there in the bottom but again I didn't want that and end up breaking them off um, door panels are held in place by little screws that wouldn't be wouldn't show like that on the original car but that's how they put them in place but this is all like soft plastic uh, the engine crikey the engine that was two weeks work on its own not very not very focused unfortunately I need to get all my camera and everything all sorted back out so I can get all stuff back in focus again but yeah all the wiring's there with the distributor I think is it a distributor yeah Oop. distributor in that corner that's all wired up goes through all the way through and let me turn it over there you go there's the underside all your rubbers all the wiring all coming down into the engine block around this side uh, all the suspension is spring loaded I don't want to push it down too hard because the only downside on this kit is this join here on both sides you can see this one's starting to pull away uh, I think that's probably because of the spring that's in there it's putting too much pressure is pushing it that way while trying to hold it down that way but all the suspension front and rear all works a little bit of a king here but that's cooling for the front brakes oh that's another thing all of this all the brakes this is all photo etch so it actually looks like see and they rotates in the calipers as well these are really 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 nice kits put together I was well pleased with this one I'm going to put it down with trying not to break anything off it. I can feel rubbers pushing against my hand now. Crikey. Go on, get on there. That's it. So yeah, very nice kit. I do... I do like that. Most people go for the... Um, was it the orange one? Or the martini racing I quite liked the green even though it's sort of showing up blue on the camera uh, this is a it's a the recommended color for the kit anyway uh, the other next up is Chevy Blazer 4x4 now this had been started by my father <coughs> excuse me it wasn't 100% complete uh, the engine wasn't in it at the time um, so it was, it was just mostly let's turn it over make sure nothing falls out it was mostly just the bottom end it had no wheels on it most of the suspension wasn't there and it was moulded in this Maroon, I'd like to call it a metallic maroon colour you can see here on the back of the wheels I never got around to doing it I, when it's down like that you can't see the wheels unless you're looking for it so I don't really bother <coughs> so what was complete on it was mostly the chassis the cab area was the glass in the front end of the cab area and none of the seating was in the engine wasn't done 
um, and it had the um, the decals on the side. So we, I ripped those off. I didn't like the maroon colour. It looked too plasticky. So I gave it this nice orange, excuse me, orange metallic. Uh, what I was going for, but unfortunately didn't occur. You can see there's loads of like cracking in the paint. Um, I was trying to get like a candy effect, like a candy orange. Um, so what I did was I laid down a base of I think it was X11 Tamir X11. Uh, chrome silver or it could have been um, sparkling silver in the LP range uh, what was that 48 I think it was LP could have been LP 48 so I put a silver base down and then proceeded to do 10 coats of clear orange it was 26 over the top took forever I won't lie took about two or three days to get that level of orange on it um, the results okay but I think I might well, actually buy proper candy colors in the, the near future when I come around to doing stuff like that because trying to polish it up I ended up stripping some of the cut you can just make it out when my tip of my finger is um, started rubbing the paint off and the bonnet did open whether it still opens or not I don't know yeah so let's flip that back try again there we go so I don't usually do the chrome parts on the engines I like to strip them back and make them like a, the stainless color that you normally see on some of these batteries still need painting up a little bit well, it's got two batteries in there I don't know so, yeah. I wouldn't say it's 100% finished but it's it's finished to how I like it at this moment in time uh, but it looks like we're losing the deco off the front That's, right, we'll take that off not to worry most of mine haven't got number plates anyway but yeah that didn't come out too bad. I've gone for a like a semi gloss interior, so it looks like what do you call it that plasticky sort of look. Uh, and I had a vinyl top to it, even though I know most of them didn't have vinyl tops if they ever had a vinyl top. <clears throat> you have to excuse me but yeah that that was the second no that's the th that was the third run on vehicles for last year um then we have motorbikes I, did, I decided to so yeah I decided to do um some motorbikes because I've never built a motorbike before um let me move this one out of the way for the second. Um, so the first one I got was this 112 Tamiya Yamaha Virago. It was quite cheap. Was like, I think over here in the UK it was about £14.99, something like that. And it was uh, on offer for about seven. It was half price, seven ninety nine. So I thought, crikey, I'll have that, pick it up. Um, what can I say about this one? 
No, not really. For a first um, bike, it went together really well. It's Tamiya. I know people who say, you can't always say Tamiya goes together really well because it doesn't. Um, to be honest with you, a lot of the kits really do. They just sort of fall together. Yeah. I can't really say much more about this one. Um, so for a for, for, for first attempt on, I'm really pleased with the way this one turned out. I don't know, I don't know much about motorbikes, same as I don't know much about engines on cars and transmissions and all that sort of stuff. All I, all I, I like the look of, if I like the look of something, I'll buy it and I'll make it. That's all that interests me. So, yeah, Mika Blue is the paint colour. It was a, I think it was a red colour on the box. But, yeah, that's it. That's how that one's come out. Really nice for me. So sort of, after doing that one, a couple of months, probably I was so I'd probably think about April, maybe May. I thought well, I'll have a, I like the look of that Yamaha, and got this R1. Is it YZF? I don't know. But again. Very detailed. Love the detail in this spring in loads of spring suspension. I have to be careful because these lights pop off. Um, again, this is in Mika Blue. Uh, there was two other paint schemes. A I think it was red and white and white and red but yeah this is very nice looking bike actually I'm not into modern stuff much so if I, if I was to do another bike again I'd be looking for perhaps a Harley Davidson an old, old Harley Davidson like the um, I think it was the one eighth, or I think it was one eighth or one ninth scale that Tamiya brought out of that all those years ago. Big old F F L H twelve hundred, I think it was electro, something like that. And I think they had a police version as well. But yeah, I'm pleased with the way these turned out. So I might build another bike again. Again, it's just something that caught my eye and I, I quite like the look of it so the only thing I, I tell you what I don't like on here is these decals they were a pain in pain in the backside those decals there <coughs> I think if they was to do that again perhaps I don't know make that all photo etch I think it might be a bit too thin for the mesh, but yeah, photo etch that. Perhaps make these photo etch. That would make them look nicer. Yeah, quite pleased with the way these two bikes turned out. Decals went down really well. There you have it. Two Yamahas. So I actually I did like that new Suzuki one that came out in this modern style of bike. But for the price that was a lot of cash. This was on sale and this one was on sale. This one was 
ended up seven about seven ninety nine and this one was twenty three or twenty four pounds something like that so yeah very pleased with the way those turned out okay so now I've moved into the one twenty fourth scale trucks uh this was actually done the end end of 2020 around about christmas time i think it was um this is the um what kit was this revel the revel kit this is painted up in mika red that's uh the lp range um Drop some bits. LP forty two lacquer paints, Mika Red. Too far over there, too much noise. Um it's a nice looking kit. But I don't think I've done it justice. All the interior, you see it through the window, red and white, I think it's red and white, doors don't open, it's unfortunate, hood does, I'll pull it over too far, there we go, <coughs> excuse me, it's got a grill in there it's not photo etch it's um it's like that fiber mat stuff they put on the tank models for the tigers and that i have to go over the vents looks okay there quite happy with it decals are a little i don't know i seem to have problem with decals nowadays I'm not sure if that's the right engine colour or not I assumed it was a cat so or a cat type engine so I painted it yellow or like a mustardy yellow everything was all chromed uh, the chrome I or what I used for the chrome was the Molotov liquid chrome um i haven't tried any out out any of that um what's the stuff they use mostly nowadays matt from um, model car videos uses it a lot oh what's it called it's like an adhesive film sheet thing no i can't think of it so at the moment I'm still currently using Molotov pen sprayed through an airbrush gives me the results I want ok so there's the, oh, if I don't smash the oh we lost the fifth wheel so there's the underside nothing special to look at I wouldn't say it's not dated um, but there are issues in the moulding in some places uh, there's a few mould lines that you need to get rid of and that um, look at the back end I can show you the back end of my cool, I think there's yeah, that's too shiny to pick that up properly. But let's see where we're going with that. So that's that one. Now I've got a couple more, which are current. Um, this plan sheet on the bottom here. 
some of you that may have rec may recognise it, may not. This is a monogram kit, and it is moulded in bright pink. I think well, they are. It looks a little bit like Lady Penelope's car, but it's not. This is a 1959 Cadillac Eldorado convertible and it is the Rebel monogram kit it's got amazing detail absolutely amazing detail you can't see it, you can't see it on this piece um, just so happens I've got some of the bits in the box next to me so that's the uh, interior tub, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to end up flocking that, it's not staying pink, it will not stay pink, I've got to choose a colour for it, it's a vehicle but it's not staying pink, uh, two piece, two piece back, uh, two piece front seat, I actually had a look at some photos online for colour inspiration and that this is actually how it was on the back so they've got all that right which is quite impressive I haven't got the chassis available to look at because it's in the back end drying um, whether we're going to be able to see this or not I really don't let's see if we can move the camera to the product whether that will come into focus or not I think the plastic's too shiny uh, we're going to get it pink on pink mm, nope not really anyway all these dials little tiny you can't you really can't see it I don't think try a bit closer come on no it don't want it well there's a bank of knobs and switches oh there you go a little bank of knobs and switches there fully deep oh it's going out there's a door handle open here you've got the you can see it there as well that's the door lock it is absolutely beautifully detailed kit pretty hard to get hold of it's 30 32 years old I think this kit is but I see it come up on um, evil bay uh, put the bid in for 35 pound and I won it so well pleased so yeah that's what's happening at the moment But I also have another truck and it's not I don't think it's going to fit in here on camera it is <clears throat> I will try and get it on here if I can so this is the 1 16th monogram Kenworth Aerodyne Conventional and I'm doing it in a metallic blue dark metallic blue you'll see the flick this, this hasn't had no gloss or hasn't been rubbed down or anything I've put the decals on these are the actual original kit decals there's a lot you could do with these trucks in the days my dad built the ordinary 
Kenworth one. This is one of his kits from his stash. Yeah, it's probably not the correct yellow in cat engine colour, but it's yellow as far as I'm concerned. Um, I've still got a ways to go on this one. I haven't done any of the interior. <coughs> I'm still thinking about um, maybe putting lights in it, like my dad did with his his ordinary Kenworth conventional. The other kit he had was the Peter the Peterbilt three fifty nine, but uh, someone bought that off of him many many moons ago a few of the tanks and that are not glued on they're just placed on there for now um, they're glued together but they need they need cleaning up to get rid of all these seam lines and things so we've still got that work to do on those so basically that's my last year since I um, done anything on this channel um, so that's where I am that's where I'm up to um, like I said I want to um, carry on with my channel But I will need a little bit of time to get back into it again. Um, unfortunately, anxiety plays a lot of issues with me at the moment. So, if you see a video pop up, um, please like it. I'm not going to ask you to anyone to subscribe to any of these videos. Uh, I haven't been around for a while doing this, so this is just a, a, a model update of where I am. Um, thank you for those that have held on their subscriptions. I have noticed a few people leave over the year. I don't blame them. Um, if you subscribe to someone, you want actually want to see some some work going on. Um, so yeah, thank you for hanging in there. If you like the video then press the like button and hopefully I will see you in the next one with further updates. Thank you.